Did you draw these? No. Oh. I even drew them. Did he? <laughs> you know, actually, these aren't too bad. How about that, huh? A gorilla who draws. <laughs> gorilla that can draw. A gorilla who draws. Now that's something. Dad. Oh, boy. Dad, I told you I can draw. Look. <laughs> the press is going to eat this up. Oh. A gorilla who can actually draw. Now that's, that's like, ah. that's a game changer. Game changer. So that was a clip from the one and only Ivan, which is available on Disney Plus from next week. And I'm thrilled to say that we are joined by one of its stars, Brian Cranston. Welcome. Thank you, Claire. How are you? I am. I'm great. Um, my surroundings kind of pale in, in comparison compared to yours. I'm loving this uh, this deep mahogany background. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's my man cave office that my wife says <laughs> that that's where you go. <laughs> I got it. Got it. So has has that been uh, the theme of your lockdown? Just life in the man cave office? Uh, no. Sometimes I'm baking bread too. I'm uh, okay. I'm into the sourdough baking bread time. Yes, it's I quite. Well, yeah, one of the great things about uh, lockdown has been, I think, all the cliches that we've all lent into. We've all become excellent bakers. We're all fitness experts now. Um, you know, we're all practicing yoga. And anything else you you, you want to add? <laughs> well, you know, the, the COVID-19, I thought, was a, a clue to gain 19 pounds. And <laughs> I certainly did my best to achieve that. And now I'm going back down because I just can't stand being heavy. Well, but you know what? More, more of you to love, and uh, more oh. of you, to be, more of you to be adored in these films. So I know uh, time is limited. So let's get to it. Um, sure. The one and only Ivan. It's such a gorgeous uh, story, full of empathy, uh, based on a true story. How aware were you of of the real Ivan before you said yes to the project? I remember vaguely hearing about a a silverback gorilla in a shopping mall, and I thought. Why was a gorilla in a shopping mall? And they said, no, it was kind of a, a quasi circus setup. And it wasn't until after I read the script and read the book about it um, that I saw the documentary about Ivan in the state of Washington here in the States. And it was remarkable. And so then when I signed on to do the, to do the movie, I realized that this was an incredible journey that this, this, this beast had um, this couple actually adopted this little gorilla. Unfortunately, the gorilla's family was wiped out by poachers. And I mean, it was a baby, it was wearing diapers and they were taking it to the park and putting it on the swings. And it was, and it drew so much attention and they loved this little guy. But then he became what he's supposed to become, a gorilla curious and strong and their house was destroyed. And uh, my character in real life didn't want to say goodbye to his son. So he arranged to have him uh, to create this circus in a defunct uh, shopping mall. And that's where the story takes off from there. Well, this is it. I mean, your even uh, your reaction to uh, how you describe the story in itself is it's it's funny to observe because it is a larger than life story. But uh, you know, on one level, it's just okay. It's just a guy and a bunch of animals. But it's about something much much deeper than that. I mean, there's a particular line in the movie where you almost scoff at yourself, well, at the character of Mac, by you say you say, oh, asking a gorilla for advice, and you almost. <laughs> Yeah. You, you almost eye roll at, at, at yourself. I mean, did, is this a film that you think can teach us about, about empathy? Very much so. It, it's, <clears throat> we made the movie in London um, two years ago. Uh, okay. Thea Sharrick is our director and we had a, a wonderful time. Little did we know that even though it resonated back then, now, so much more so because you think of well, um, the captivity of animals and whether that's right or wrong, we don't answer that question, but through entertainment, we pose it. So if, if children watch it now and ask the question, is it right to have animals in captivity? And some may say no, and some may say yes, it's not, not for us to decide 
But if if that sparks a communication and a, and a conversation within the family, that's that's fantastic. And aren't we all feeling a little captive right now with the lockdowns and and the restrictions on travel and things like that? Well, this movie is an adventure. And what I really love about it, it is a true family uh, film. So whether you're six or 96, join in, have fun, and and you'll laugh and you'll cry. It's really a sweet movie. It, it, it really is. Um, I have to say, uh, kudos uh, on your British accent well, that, that Mac puts on when... <laughs> When the uh, when the top hat is on, the accent just flew on out. Um, did, did you did you have a diction? Did you have a coach for that? Was Thea giving you any tips? No, she was actually thinking maybe we shouldn't do that. And <laughs> uh, I said to the American ear, we think the British accent represents royalty, and we we're just we're just, I tell you, we're all so impressed with it. So I thought my, my character is a showman, and. The only time he uses the posh British accent is when he's putting on a show. And then backstage, that drops. Off goes his uh, tunic and his girdle. He's all tightened up. And, he, you know, it's so. Um, and she said, I'm, I'm not sure about that. And I said, no, I think to the American ear, it's going to sound very regal, very, very posh and, and like a show. And so we kept it. Well, I guess it serves the story, isn't it? Because, you know, Mac is a guy who wants everybody to think that everything's great on the outside. You right. know, he's in a top hat in real life. Everything's fantastic. And then behind the scenes, um, you know, as people come to uh, know, yeah. there, 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 is, there is deep trouble. Um, I want to talk to you about this cast. I mean, because, you know, uh, Chaka Khan is a chicken. Chaka Khan is... <laughs> Chaka Khan. Chicka Khan, Chicka, I'm sure she didn't get bored of that. Um, I mean, you know, when, when you're pitched a movie and it's like, okay, Sam Rockwell is going to play a gorilla, Angina Jolie is going to be an elephant, and Chaka Khan is going to be a chicken. I mean, how do you react to that in, in reading? Well, it was good to know that going in because, you know, when I was working with all these animals, and by the way, there are about 10 animals in this movie and none of them are real. Every single one of them is computer graphic. And so I just have to imagine what they would sound like. And by knowing that Danny DeVito was playing the dog and, and Angelina Jolie was the elephant uh, and Sam Rockwell's the gorilla. And, and so I was just having their voices in my head and being able to then imagine what, how that, that might sound. Uh, but it was challenging because every, you know, the CGI, the, everyone's wearing a green outfit with a green mask and all these men carrying around a, a, a huge cage covered in green that would eventually become the elephant. So I know where to look there and there's her leg that was injured and there she is. Oh, there's her trunk. And you just have to imagine that the trunk is going to come over here and you pet the trunk, you know, and it's just, it, it actually gives you freedom to be able to use your imagination as, as wildly as you want. Um, yeah, I, guess I, w I wanted to ask actually, I mean, was there, was there an element of that where you felt almost childlike again? Yeah, I mean, in, in our business, we're not only encouraged to use our, uh, our imagination, we're paid to do it. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, the, the more that you can imagine, and we, in the very beginnings of acting classes, you're, you're doing what they call space work, and working with pretend props and things like that. So you, you get used to learning about space, you know, in your mind. And so that you can see a, a elephant trunk here and you can gauge about how it looks. And then the animators then can pop it up and you go like this. And then they put in the trunk that's kind of tickling your face. You know? <laughs> and it's like, and you just imagine that and they go, yeah, that'll work. And it's like, okay, good. Well, it, it most certainly works. I wanted to ask about, you know, um, things that you take home from set because, you know, I mean, most of the action we see happens um, in the mall and the way and the way the set design was done and the way it's dressed is, you know, so realistic. I mean, I know obviously a real mall essentially set was was used as well as like all the other bits you see in the background. But were you able to uh, to take anything away as a memento? Perhaps the, the the drawing of the beetle that Ivan did. I I I took that big cage that was going to be an elephant. And my wife is angry <laughs> at me for doing that because we have nowhere Not to- the man cave. <laughs> no. Um, 
No, I, you know, I usually do, you know, have a little souvenir that I, I, I say, is anyone going to miss this? You know, um, I, I think a couple sketches that I have, I have one, uh, a couple people would draw sketches of me, which I think were really, really sweet. And, uh, in my top hat and ringmaster outfit, and that's, that's fun. Um, I'm not much of a collector though. You know, I, I go from job to job and my, I savor the moment. Um, but I'm not one to collect a bunch of things from it because I feel like that just adds weight to it. I don't really need a tchotchke or something to remind me that I was able to do, you know, this, a great movie like the one and only Ivan. And it's, it's a beautiful movie. Has this given you inspiration to do more films like this um, in, in the future? Well, I'm open to anything. Um, you know, I shot this movie right after I finished working at the National Theater uh, for seven months and doing a play. And I like to mix things up. I like to do a play and then a, maybe a movie or a television series or whatever. It could be a comedy or a drama or a family show. or so. It really comes down to, and it always comes down to, the written word. Uh, the writer is king and or queen, and um, <laughs> and and you you have to be moved by it. So when I read a script or a play, if it resonates with me, I trust that it's going to resonate with an audience. That this is meaningful. This is important. This has really something to say that benefits society or makes us think. In this case, with Ivan. It makes us feel good. It makes us cry and laugh. But it also, as I mentioned, it raises that question about animals in captivity. Is that the right thing? Now, some may say, yeah, because, because the next generation seeing these animals at a zoo or a, or a, you know, a marine park or something like that, that person may become an animal rights activist or a veterinarian or something uh, in the next generation, uh, and without seeing them firsthand, they may not have a connection to that. There's some merit to that. And so, like I said, we don't want to answer that question. It's an individual position to take, but it's, we hope that it, that that topic is raised within the family. Absolutely. Well, I think it's not just about, um, animal rights. It's, I think it's us uh, thinking about personal freedom as well, for sure. It is. Um, what I don't think is personal freedoms is right now in this environment in this pandemic that we it's not a personal freedom or a loss of personal freedom if you're wearing a mask it is it is showing respect to yourself and to others that you don't want someone else to be sick uh it's not it's not the right thing to do i had covid19 and it was back in march i was very fortunate that my symptoms were mild and I overcame that. I've since been giving plasma and trying to do what I feel is responsible to not spread this, to try to convince people this is something that we can, as, as humans on this planet, overcome, but only if we embrace this responsibility and say, we have to do this together. That's the only way it's gonna work. So I, I urge everyone to realize it's not an it's not an impingement of your rights. It is it is giving other people and yourself mutual respect. And that is what we call a word. <laughs> Brian Cranston, star of the one and only Ivan. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you very much. Good to see you.